Welcome to the Wisdom Lifestyle Money Show. I'm your host, Scott Dillingham. The goal of the show is to show you how you can grow personally, financially, have a larger net worth, and leverage your largest asset to help you develop the person you want to be. I take you through all the steps I did from being nothing to being told that I was nobody and I was never going to accomplish anything, from getting kicked out of high school to owning a multi-million dollar real estate portfolio in my own company with more than 20 employees. You'll meet our partners, you'll meet our friends, and you'll quickly discover how you can improve your life. So listen in and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Wisdom Lifestyle Money Show. I'm your host, Scott Dillingham. Today I've got Ryan with us from RFG Plumbing. How's it going, Ryan? Pretty good. And yourself? Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for coming on. Uh, you're a local plumber. You're doing really well on the market. you got lots of great Google reviews. Um, so that's why I wanted to have you on here today. But I want to go back to your childhood. How did all this start? It all started, uh, me and my brother were about five and six years old. Uh, my dad was a plumber, so we were working on the back of his truck. Uh, we'd go in on the weekends after school. We'd help stock the trucks, learn fittings. Uh, we'd bring us to jobs. Uh, my uncle is also a plumber, so it's like we wanted to hang out with our cousins, and it's like my dad would drive us to that job site. We'd go help my uncle for a couple hours before getting to uh, to see our cousins. So being around in the trade and being a fourth generation, like my grandpa, my great grandpa, my grandpa, my dad, my uncles, my cousins, they're all plumbers. So it's like we've got a long line of uh, plumbers in our family. That's awesome. So with that being said, was there any cool tricks or any life lessons that they taught you along the way that you still carry with you today? Always work hard. Uh, think things through and piece it apart. A lot of people think jobs are impossible or and it's it's not impossible. There's always a way. Um, something that really sticks with me is that you know when everybody is willing to give up, you're seconds away from success. Okay. Like it's like you know, we're ealing or something. It's super hard. Like I was actually just at an eel job prior to this, and I was ealing, and it was like pushing, pushing, and I'm like, man, it's getting hard. I want to just change to another piece of equipment. And it's like good thing I didn't because if I uh, two seconds more that I went, it's like got the clog in and out, and it was just like you know, when you're ready to give up, it's like. No, I got this. <laughs> There's a book on that. It's called Three Feet from Gold. I don't know if you ever read it. But yeah, I'm going to check that out. That's actually pretty sweet. Yeah, it's cool. It's, uh, not to ruin the story, but this guy was mining and uh, he had some land and he wasn't finding anything. So he sold all of his equipment for dirt cheap. And then they found the biggest like gold mine three feet from where uh, the guy oh, stopped. That's crazy. Literally. So it's, yeah, three feet You're from You're probably going to hear about that on Oak Island or something like that. Yeah. When they're ready to cash in and be done. They're like, oh, there's the money. There's all the gold and everything. Yeah. But it's true. So that's why you don't give up on things in life or business or whatever it is. Because if you if you give up, you're never going to get it. And like you said, two more seconds and you, you got it. Oh, that's it. And how many people are failed but still successful? There's a lot of super successful people that have failed. And it's like, don't look at it as that. You know, what have you learned? What can you grow off of it? Right? And yeah, you know, especially when it comes to the plumbing, there's a lot of stuff that it's like, we may not always have the answer, but we will find the answer. It's true. And even if whether you like the guy or not, but like Donald Trump, right, in his real estate investing portfolio, he actually went bankrupt, but he rebuilt stronger and faster because he learned from his mistakes and he, he moved forward. No, that is, uh, that is, yeah, it's pretty sweet. No, oh, that's awesome. So then, so now you have RFG plumbing. Was it always RFG plumbing? Uh, so it started as RFG plumbing. We started in 2016. Uh, and then once we started, the business started growing. So we started networking with other businesses like electricians, HVAC, and those types of things. Then it's like we started referring these other companies. But then as their companies are growing, the issue we seen was their jobs became more of a priority than the jobs that we were sending them. Okay. So at that point, we started RFG Electrical, right? and it's just it's been growing since. So that was uh, we were about two years into the business, and that was about 2018, 2019 when we started that, and it's been a success. It's Good. it's been a little bit of a challenge, like any business until you grow and get your customer base but then once you're at that point then it's just now it's like the machine is moving right that's it is there going to be any other niches that you get into besides plumbing and electrical uh one of the things that we were looking at and then again it's just finding the people like everybody's struggling now with that but an hvac side you know so then this way it's like a one-stop shop um, there has there are other companies that we partner with and we do you know, that do renovations and do different things around your house and stuff like that. Those are people that we've referred that we're always going to refer because they're good at what they do. Uh, But it's just, we haven't really looked at that side, but it's just more so the HVAC. So we got the trades covered because it's like when somebody's doing anything, it's easy to pick up one phone and sit there and say, no, this is what I need done. And we're like, I got you. I can help you. 
right? Yep. I love it. Now, what does RFG plumbing stand for? I love getting asked this. Uh, so originally it's actually for my, my dad and my grandpa. So it's actually like we, RFG is my initials, my dad's initials, my grandpa. Uh, so it's Ralph Franklin Giles or mine is Ryan Franklin Giles, but we also are known as the real fucking good plumbers. Nice. I love it. And where'd that come from? Was that the public or did you guys come up with that? So my dad, when I still remember the conversation back in 2016, uh, my, my dad and my stepmother went on vacation and my, the, my dad's always big on planning. And so he, him and they went on this vacation and they both said, okay, if we're going to start a business, you plan on retiring about seven years. And, um, it's just be, and the reason why he said seven years is because any business and like any smart businessman will tell you that it takes seven years to grow a business. If you hit that seventh year mark, you know, you're good. Right. Yep. And seven years ago, they went on this vacation, they were talking. And so then my stepmother ended up going to work at the hospital. So she's a nurse. So she was working at the hospital and me and my dad are just talking. And so they said, my dad said, if, the, if he ever went into business again, it'd be starting a plumbing company. Okay. And so we were talking about it. We came up with the idea where my dad, and he was big on, I want to name it after like his dad. Right. And then with the RFG, because there's the RFGs, like there's, like I said, my grandpa, my dad, me, my son, uh, my uncle, I have a couple uncles with it too. And it's, so it's big, right? So it's like, I want to do something with RFG. And I remember just joking around and we're just like, oh yeah, real effing good. And the, so I like, he was big on it. He was like super happy. And I remember my, my son and my daughter were with me when I was talking to my dad and it's like, let's get in the car. We drove from Essex to the Leamington hospital, waited till my stepmother was on her break. We're like, Hey, boom, we're doing this. And then it's just like, here's the line. Right. And, uh, yeah, it's been a hit. There's a lot of people and it's like, our biggest fear was, oh, maybe people aren't going to like it or it's going to throw them off. But uh, I'll tell you, it's one of those things that once you hear it, you laugh, you remember it. Yeah, you funny. know, we get people that will chase us down the street for like sweaters, for pens, for whatever. And it's like, I love when we're driving down the road and they're like, real effing good. Like, so that's, awesome. that's huge and it's cool and it sticks out. So. Do you have swag? Yeah. So we have, uh, we have sweaters, we have hats. We haven't gotten to pants or anything like that, but all the sweaters, hats, uh, our, even actually it's cool because it's like my kids, we take the real effing good part off, but it's just yeah. RFG. Uh, all my kids wear that stuff to school, right? Uh, we have little work shirts and stuff for them. So what it's like teachers know yeah. what that means. Actually, <laughs> funny story. So in, I want to say 2020, I think it was. Uh, so we were contacted by Rogers to do a commercial. So for a hockey night in Canada. It was really cool. So it's like we were going, okay, we need all these actors, whatever, like these people. And then it was like last minute, everybody bailed. So it's like literally my brother's girlfriend at the time, uh, my son and me were in this commercial. And uh, so my son got to be in this. This is his first thing ever. And he's super, super excited. Uh, they let him say it, say the slogan. And so we, we filmed it. They ended up bleeping it out for obviously national television. I mean, it's, you could probably find it online, the unedited version. But... Uh, when I told my son's principal, who was a customer of ours, um, uh, when I told him, he called an assembly, had everybody go down there, and so they could play it in the gym forum. So it's one of those things. and The edited version. The edited version, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was an elementary school, so they had to play the edited version, but uh, that was huge. And it made me, I know that meant a lot to them and to, to everybody, right? And even now when people are like, oh, I've seen your commercial, you know, like that's... That's our 15 seconds of fame, I guess you'd say, but it's still, it's one of those cool things. Yeah. No, I love it. That's awesome. Now, I know also this show is like mostly geared towards investors and we're talking about how you work with investors and how things work. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Yeah. So one of the cool things with knowing different real estate agents, home inspectors, different businesses is that uh, from time to time, we'll get contacted by investors. And like the, one of the biggest things are, is that like, you're in Toronto or you're wherever you are in the world and you're buying this property, you're trusting your real estate agent, whoever your, your handyman or this buddy is that they're making this decision for you. And I can tell you that we've seen from time and time again, where everybody knows a guy and the scary thing is, is the guy doesn't always know. So it's like one of the services that we offer and that me personally, that I like doing is I'll go in, we'll look and it's say maybe it's not just necessary plumbing, but it's like, there's other issues that we notice. I'll let you know, I'll take it pictures. We'll send that stuff to you. Right? Or you know, it's a big deal because it's just like knowing what you're buying. Right. And it's yeah. just, especially when in the, we're in the market of where people are overpaying, yeah. like it's scary. Once you open up a wall, 
what's behind there, what's that, right? And or it's like even what's underneath the ground, right? Because it's like we we call it where people are putting lipstick on a pig, where it, you know it's painted, it's nice, everything's all nice, brand new. But what's underneath the ground? Nobody's fixed it, and it's just that's when all of a sudden you buy this property, you put tenants in, and then it's like, oh shit, there's actually shit on the floor. <laughs> And we do have an older infrastructure as far as plumbing, even citywide, but just we have a lot of older houses here too. So yeah. this is definitely important. Windsor definitely has some old stuff. And it's, you know, you look at some of these older houses where people have been doing some of their own work over the years and it's Band-Aid fixes or it's, it's fixes aren't right. And it's like we come in and it's just like I, my mentality, and especially from having my own properties, is like I like fixing everything because it's, once say like and what we did at my house was it's like brand new sewer in the ground everything because the minute that i spend a dollar on flooring i, I spend a dollar on anything right is that now in five years if that were to go what is it going to cost me right inflation's going up so it's like if you spend a little bit of money out front at the beginning you get everything done now once you get those tenants in like in theory you should have 50 years right yeah. so it's just like then that way it might just be painting or whatever small stuff and I get it people are on a budget right and everybody wants to make money but if you don't invest the money at the beginning and get things done right it's how much more money you're going to spend over time and it's you add those little bills up that will be twice as much if not more than what the one initial cost would be so we like to break things down too for people Um, so it's just like saying this is major fix this is minor fix or this is what we believe you need to fix now no that makes sense so so I'm an investor I'm in uh... Even if I'm in Windsor, Toronto, doesn't matter where, let's say I'm an investor, I'm buying this rental property here in Windsor. What are some common, what's the most common issue that you're finding in a property or maybe biggest piece of advice that you could give to an investor to prevent flooding or sewer backup, that type of thing? Uh, one big thing, especially in Windsor, um, we get the we get a lot of floods. So it's like the backwater valve sump pump subsidy program, which is something that we do offer through the city. So we Could do, you elaborate on that? So the city of Windsor offers a... Uh, it's twenty eight hundred dollars rebate, and what that covers is for a backwater valve, a sump pump, the disconnection of a collection box, which is a square box, your storm and sanitary meet. Uh, so they give you money for that to offset the cost of, say, a flood in your basement. Right? Okay. Uh, so now, what's kind of cool with that is that we have the technology. If you have a clean out or not, we can camera, we can find exactly where your sewer is. We pinpoint like the best spot where a sump pump would go. And ideally, too, is like we help plan it because it's say you own this house today. What happens if you sell it tomorrow? So we look at it as the next person that can come in. This is how we kind of plan things. Maybe they want to put a bathroom, maybe whatever, turn this into an apartment. So the nice thing is with that program, with what we do is so we help you plan that aspect. Same thing with putting a sump pump. A lot of people put them in ridiculous spots, right? And it's like, what's the best spot in your house that we could put it in? It's nice with that. We go through the program. We explain it. You get pictures, all that stuff. We fill out the city paperwork, which makes it super easy for the homeowner. And then the only thing the homeowner has to do at the end is we get paid. You get an invoice that says paid in full, and you submit it to City Hall, which I'm pretty sure is all online now. For the homeowner, they pay up front and then get reimbursed? So unfortunately, the city of Windsor hasn't caught up to today's standards. Like I, I think there's maybe... 20, 30 companies, plumbing companies in Windsor, Essex County. And to me, what I think is they should be doing is that if a check's getting made out, like it should go to the people that are licensed within the city. But apparently there were some companies doing fraud out of okay. other companies. When we had the big flood in 2016, there were some companies coming down here and they're scamming the system. They were, oh, hey, you know what? We'll do it this way kind of thing. And so the city just made it now where the, the homeowner has to pay us up front and then they get the reimbursement on the end. Okay. Just prevent still, fraud. So 2800 bucks is that including HST? Uh, so, so the backwater valve sump pump, it ranges some people's houses. Like we have a standard uh, typically, depending on people's houses, right? If it's a house trap, how deep your sewer is, um, it's pretty, pretty basic around there. I mean, typically we're like 4500 bucks plus tax for the most part. You get the twenty eight hundred dollar rebate, and this is saying for an inside one. We sometimes run into the city of Windsor where you could be outside uh, and have a house trap outside. So you have to do a little bit more digging. You have to get locates all those types of things, which we do. Um, so that's a little bit more costly because you got the other contractors that have to come in and dig the dirt, and then we gotta bring that in. But we try and be reasonable. We try and keep it consistent. Where 
it's like the kind of the pandemic where everybody went crazy and was like selling toilet paper for X amount of dollars. We've been consistent because it's, you know, it sucks at your house flood. Like, and I didn't ask for my house to flood. You know, now I got to deal with it. So I agree. That's a pain. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So that's great advice for an investor. Um, now back to maybe a business owner or somebody starting business, right? Cause you, you've done this for a long time. You, you're one of the highest rated in the city as far as the Google reuse that, that I looked up, which is kudos to you. So what would you say to somebody who's starting a business? Doesn't have to be plumbing, but what are some success tips that you could share with them? A lot of people don't realize how many hours that you have to actually put in as a business owner. A lot of people don't realize, they, they think success is like that. And I think granted there are the odd people that you walk into and get the money and all that stuff but those are the people that don't appreciate their business and don't appreciate their employees yeah. um we've done a lot of hours and it's just like you have to take every role on in your business when you first start and it's like don't be scared of the challenges and you know, like we've gone to different business meetings gone to different things there's no like business education other than it's just you learn on the go right yeah and it's like you know it's like when you your kids sit and say how do you know how to be a parent it's like you just yeah. you learn right along the yeah. way and it's kind of same thing with business that we've learned you know, we failed at things like definitely what was the right decision what was the right path to go and it's like we've learned those things and don't be afraid to fail because you're not always going to have the answer and everything's not always going to work out and be that success but it's like what you learned from that mistake or you know, by me not being able to do this it led me on this path yeah and be honest be upfront with people if you can't do something I like that you said, don't be afraid to fail. There was this, uh, man, I forget the book or I would quote it properly. But what they're saying is like in school, you raise your hand, right? To answer the teacher's question and people are embarrassed to get it wrong, right? And their classmates will tease them if you get the answer wrong, right? So they say a lot of people today, they're scared to do something wrong because it dates back to their childhood when they would get teased for it. So it's cool that you said that because it's true. It's perceived fear, perceived fear if you fail it means nothing. It's yes, the real fear, like falling out of an airplane, right? Without a parachute, that's a real fear. But um, yeah, I agree. Starting a business, it doesn't have to be scary and you are going to make mistakes, but that's how you learn. So I love that you said that. Yeah, like, and everyone, like, it's great to think, oh, hey, like you look at like the Amazon, for example, everyone's like, oh, it's a major company. They're making all these billions of dollars. Wait, people don't realize he started out selling books. Like I mean, in a garage was, too, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was a garage. Uh, my great uncle, I remember in the States, so when Amazon was first starting up, um, he was selling books, small scale, right? So it's just, I remember when you learned about this and now you look at this huge company and like, and companies could veer off and get into other things. But we started as plumbers, like we're plumbers and it's like growing into other things. And it's just like, you learn, you bring other people in and it's just, like, and that's how your business grows, right? With anything. And it's a fun, it's a fun ride. Trust me, I get to work with my dad and my brother and we're all the same. So we butt our heads, but it's just you know, at the end of the day, it's like we've built something from the ground up. My kids get to see this and it's just like they get to be a part of it. And it's like now that's the next generation. And it's just to be able to have that and sit there and say, like, we made this for everybody. That's a, that's a huge thing. I love it. That's awesome. Um, so you're an investor or you're a business owner and you're in Windsor and you need a plumber. How do people find you? How do they reach out to you? So there's a lot of good ways. Uh, for one, you can call our office, uh, five, which is 519-817-7117. Uh, you can check out either one of our websites, so rfgplumbing.com, rfgelectrical.com, or find us on Facebook. Um, I do like that you touched on the reviews, actually. And one good thing is, is when you're hiring any contractor, read the reviews. Or like a lot of people, they trust the Facebook where they, they ask. Yeah. Um, but you'll see, like in our reviews, like it's just where people aren't just saying good job, they did this. It's like they'll write you know, like what the experience was. And like I like reading that. That's like our positive motivation to sit there and sit and like, hey, you made the right choice and you know, you made you make it fun at the end of the day. Right? I love it. No, that's great advice. And I agree. Always check the reviews because you just never know. People can appear great, but yeah. It's, if they have reviews, like, good job, blank, all they're all five stars, it's great. How do you know they're real? Right? And that's where people question where if you look up and they like story, 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 it's like, huh, you know what I mean? Because it's like either they have some good marketing guy taking the time to write all those or, you know, or people are actually going out and you know, word of mouth is huge, especially. So that's where it's really cool. And I'm looking forward to helping whatever investors and you know, making 
your your properties in Windsor and Essex County. You know, have the best plumbing, have the best electrical, that's for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. No, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. If you're serious about real estate investing and you want to take it to the next level with the least amount of time and mistakes, then you're going to want to sign up for our Real Estate Investor Hub. Visit CanadianRealEstateNetwork.com and hit the blue button or banner that says Free Investor Resources. Inside, you'll have access to real estate investing courses, networking opportunities, webinars featuring industry professionals, as well as dedicated chat channels to share and get access to unique properties. I look forward to seeing you there.